Did it feel good though? <laughs> right. Rice gum reference. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. so good. I love rice gum. I wonder how he's doing, man. Oh, who cares? We gotta have him over again soon. Not me. Just kidding. I love him. I know you love him, dude. I love him too. I it's would my never. Best friend. I would never disparage gum. He hit me up the other day. He just he just sent me a video message of him eating one of his like I guess I don't know one of his friends like his friend pooped in his hand and he just ate it. It was funny. It was oh I I I, I reacted haha on it. He sent that to me too. I think he sent it to our group. It was that it was that Vine kid, the yeah. fourteen year old kid that he hangs out with. Oh yep. He yep, shit yep. in his hand and I don't know if he was gonna plan on posting that or uh, if you wanted, like, just our opinion on it, but I thought oh, that, I said, it was oh, funny. I thought that was enough. It was funny. Uh, welcome to episode 284 of Super Mega Cast. 284. 567. One day that's gonna happen. Yeah. No, no, no there's no way. I mean, how long- Dude, I, we- gar- I guarantee in, like, episode, like, six, we're like, dude, we're never gonna be, like, 284. Yeah, but, like, that's that's a number where you can, like, wrap your head around, like, doing that for that many this years. This has been five years, and we're at 284. Dude, Mega 64, is it, like... Are we gonna make it to 500? Mega 64 is past 500, I think. But they've been doing it... I mean, they, they were live are on their podcast say, when Bin Laden was killed. Are you trying to say this is more than just a quick little stint? This is the longest thing I've ever been a part of, is... is Do you think we need to buckle down and say this is a company that we probably need to build for a, for a long time? I think it's in our minds we're, like... Well, you know, when we're like in our thirties, we're not going to be YouTubers. But <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, in the back of our heads, it's like we'll we'll be doing something else. Because we started, we were like like nineteen and twenty, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> and now we're, dude. I I've been thinking about that so I much mean, I lately. Started, I I started. I think my first video with with the Markiplier was twenty twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve. Was it? You've told me that before. I or remember was it twenty fourteen? It was twenty twelve because I moved out in twenty fifteen. No, there's no way it was. So it wasn't twenty fourteen. Yeah, no way. So I think it was twenty twelve. It's it was shortly after you guys started, which was twenty twelve, right? Yeah, because it was probably like our second or third thir- third video, maybe. Do you remember when you started in twenty twelve? Because that actually means it, Super Mega's creation from Synago was less than four years after Synago. I'm bad with dates, but can I check it? I, for some reason, I'm I'm thinking like November, December, like around the end of the year. Time frame. Dude, you know what's really weird? I just realized. What? Super Mega has existed more than two times the length that Syndigo did. Jeez. Isn't that weird to think about? It says 2012. Okay, wait. Joined December 17th, 2012. So, yeah. Yeah, so Syndigo went about three years. Yep. A little under three years. And we've been going almost six. Well, let's see when the first video was posted on uh, Syndigo. Hold up. I got oh, to scroll through these millions of... Oh, oh already at the bottom. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, Rodney, <laughs> uh, nine years of Jesus. Nine years oh, ago. I don't like that. I just seeing that number sucks. Well, you know what? Twenty twelve doesn't so feel weird. like nine years ago. Twenty twelve. When you think of twenty twelve, it doesn't feel like nine years ago. And then you got to remember, twenty twelve was ten years ago. It's gonna soon say twenty twelve was a decade ago. It's gonna say ten years this year when it when when it gets to the end. I the remember year. sitting in theaters with my dad seeing the movie twenty twelve, and it was before the big December. Uh, what was the date? The twenty twelve date. I don't know. Ma- no, remember December twentieth is when we posted our first video, and December twenty first was the when the world was supposed to end. Yep, twenty twelve. Remember that's what the date was. It was like, do you remember the whole twenty twelve fucking freak out? I remember. Remember, I uh, I passed by a church that was having like an end of the world <laughs> barbecue <laughs> with like a bouncy house and shit. <laughs> But uh, there's the thing. I don't know if it was like a lighthearted church. It, it had to be because if you legitimately thought you and your entire family and friends were about to die, you're not going to be like, oh, let's, re- can we rent a bouncy house? Yeah, we'll put that one on the company card. It's like, just be like, haha, this is a, f-. but it's like, but no, but in South Carolina, man, they totally could have believed that. I know, that's what I'm saying. And that's it's like, what's why- weird about it. I don't see South Carolina being too self aware about itself, especially in the area. In that, the, that area, in. no. And why would you spend like your last days, like, Doing something as mild as like renting a bouncy house when it's like you could you could fucking hijack a plane you could you could do whatever you want you know no repercussions hijack a plane you it's just a hijack a plane it's just a thing I was throwing out there you know how hard it is to hijack a plane these days yeah they've yeah it's not like the good old days they really ruined it criminals and is what criminals I mean. yeah not I'm not no I'm not well if someone else thought anything else then that's on that, them yeah exactly um crooks you know <laughs> crooks. a couple of crooks. I remember you and I, when we were writing the book, tried to stay away from using the word thugs for as long as we could. Because we're like, mm. Well, it's because in the book, every time we refer to uh, Al-Qaeda, we say something 
we refer to them as something ne'er different, do like ne'er do wells, like uh, desperados, <laughs> crooks, cronies. And I think like we used thugs once, and then I we, we were gonna do it again. We're like, wait, we already used. No, we we can't use thugs again. Yeah. And I remember there was like one thing that I there was a stipulation. There was one, I remember this. There was one rule that we could not do, and I said there's in no way we can describe anyone in Al Qaeda Bin Laden. As, or Bin Laden as dirty. <laughs> We cannot describe. And them no, as I like, remember that came up because there was a part where we called him a dirty old man, and it had nothing to do with the fact that, you know. But but then we were like, wait, that could be misconstrued. <laughs> yeah. Let's take it. Let's take that out. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he. I mean, Bin Laden was a dirty old. He was, man. dude. He was. He was an awful dude. <laughs> he was. I mean, he. I mean, he. He orchestrated the September 11th terrorist, the biggest event in American history ever. Yeah. Well, now thanks thanks to us, he's dead once and for all. Yeah. Well, I mean. I don't want to spoil the book too much, but uh, spoilers. Yeah, uh, everyone's getting. But their- find out how we get to that point by reading the whole book. It's fucking good. It's you it's a good. I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it. Gino Samuel does the, the audio. The version. guy that does the Chris Chan narration. You guys will love it. And all they do is plug their book. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a good book. It's, it's uh. People also ask me this on stream, and I guess we never actually addressed it. They said, "What's the deal with the New York Times?" And I realized we never actually talked about this. I think. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I'll, I'll book of the I'll, year. I'll, I'll do the long story short, and then I'm sure Matt would love to extrapolate. Um, what? Bas- I like talking. Is that? What you're- <laughs> but basically, uh, we don't have the necessary clout, and we didn't distribute uh, the books in a way to where we would be anywhere noticeable to them. It's not. It's not the clout. We we sold enough copies. A lot of it is who you know. Too. It, it is. It is that that list is very uh, pre- not. I don't want to say pretentious, but it's very. It's it's not actually based on like a real scoreboard. It's kind of they can pick and choose. Yeah, and we actually hit the requirements to be on the New York Times bestselling list. But we were young and stupid. We thought we thought we could. We didn't get it. Really it, rule the world. It wasn't in physical stores, and that was where they they disqualify it. Yeah, because it was online sales, and it's like it's twenty twenty two. Not just physical stores. It's random. Like you have to be in usually a wide selection of different types of stores, like small stores, large chains. Stores. But like they have specific areas where they're like t- where they target. It's it's so fucking weird. And and that's probably just the. I guarantee it's set up that way because the publishing industry has it like a lock on that exact plan. So they're like, we can just easily get things like that. Yeah. Because like, it, 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 second like you book. You gotta know an agent to get you this plan. Second book, we might just have to go with a publisher instead of self publishing if we want that. But I don't know. It would be great to at some point have one of the books in the trilogy hit New York Times bestseller. What we could do is we could, after the trilogy, make a compendium that's one big book and get that one on the New York Times bestselling list. <laughs> okay. You know? In my heart, we're New York Times bestsellers. Yeah, we we sold a lot of copies. You know what? We 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 did it. Like we hit the number. You know, we so skyrocketed past the number. We quadrupled it. Yeah, we sold eighty thousand copies. And, and there's a lot of physical copies of our book out there. There's probably more physical copies of our book out there than a lot of the New York Times bestseller mother motherfuckers. We actually didn't sell eighty thousand copies. That was an exaggeration. No, but no, that was an exaggeration. But we did. We did. you're like what? We didn't. <laughs> no, we 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 sold a lot. Yeah, uh, more than necessary. Not, 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 not to toot our little YouTuber horns here, <laughs> uh, but yeah, our book sold pretty well. <laughs> oh yeah, it did. yeah, it did. Uh, and then some uh, fucking idiots in the United Kingdom decided to fucking when they were loading the truck of the hardcovers, strap the straps onto tight and ruin over three hundred copies of the fucking book, which we had to pay for still. So thank you, you fucking British dumbasses. Uh, oh, I love. It was just an accident. I, I put the straps on too tight and ruined me books. Oh, God, love. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> hit my noggin. Oh, my noggin. I put my noggin. Oh, oof. I bonked my noggin, mate. Oof. I always want to say mate. Oh, me. When I, when oh, I. Oh, Lord. Oh, I love it. I, I ruined the books, love. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, they fired me. And the books look pretty what? good, eh? They fired me. Because I ruined about 300 books down at the, down at the, down at the docks. Hard covers, too. Those were... Ex- okay, we actually basically... Was it the soft covers? Oh, yeah. What oh, does yeah. that mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? Did, was it the soft covers or the hard covers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, yeah, in it there. 
What a you book. Stupid hey. British idiots. <laughs> well, he can't talk. His fucking British messed up teeth are. He, his, his tongue no, is kidding. slithering between. We're not. I'm not kidding. I, I, no, you are. I'm, I'm not. I, I love British people. I just don't like Italian. <laughs> you love British people. people? No, I hate Italians. They're loud, boisterous, obnoxious, ugly. They did not get good genes. <laughs> I'm serious. Italian people, try again. Try, try again next time, sweetheart. Have you seen Eddie Burback? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's <laughs> gonna listen and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why? I'm, I'm such a good friend to them. Like, why are they, why are they is, doing he's, this? He's, he's, a, he's a nice dude. He's great. Every, every time I, uh, uh, I come into contact with him, which, thank God, my publicist keeps me out of his circle a lot, but when I do have to come in contact with him, usually it's a good conversation. Yeah, most of the time. It's, it, it, there's only been one or two times where it's, you know, taken a bit of a turn that I didn't like. Yeah. Pretty quick, too. But usually I can tell really quick on into the conversation if it's going to go down the Eddie road, yeah. you know? Uh, the stuff that... I say, I, I, I call it the Edward road because Edward is like this different kind of person. Oh, I call it the Edward road because I thought you were making a play on words because Edward sounds like what he is saying in these conversations. No. You know, the no. Edward. I wouldn't, but I wouldn't he doesn't say the Edward, he says the... Yeah. Yeah. The, it sounds like the Edward, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about like when Jim actually came. He yeah, he actually seemed a little bit not like he he could he takes the joke and he he gets that it's a joke and he thinks it's funny. But I think at, at some point he's like, I think you told a lot of people that my mom's a racist. <laughs> <laughs> And his chat told him on the stream, and like, remember when he came up to us? I was like, "Hey guys!" So he we seemed, forgot he about seemed legitimately that. like he record shit and disparaged. then we forget about it. That's the problem, dude. I have this has happened. This actually happened to me recently uh, at my birthday party. Someone also said something like, "You said this about me," and I was like, "I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember I'm saying." Like, that. I'm sorry. I, I probably did say that, but I I say so much <laughs> shit every week that I don't remember. Uh, but but Jim, our buddy Jim. Uh, I guess apparently we said that his mom was like horrible racist <laughs> just like it's just things that aren't Jim was like I mean it's just not even like it's not even like a dig on me it's just like <laughs> it's just this weird unnecessary like well, why my mom like, you don't even know her you know it's like it's just like you didn't make fun of me or anything you just like said something and, and it was something that wasn't even like that like a funny joke it just sounds like an actual like bad <laughs> uh, so he was like my stream told me you said my mom was just a racist and I was like I, sorry man I don't remember that forgot about that I, I, I saw it because we usually do it as like a passing gag like it just to like make one of like one of ourselves just kind of like go, like the other know, one like was... laugh because whenever you say something like that I'm never expecting it. it makes me laugh and vice versa so it's like we do that and then we forget that it ripples out into the real world and gets to those people <laughs> Uh, so Buskis is gay. There um, are consequences. I, I just, uh, I saw Jackass Forever with Jim two nights ago for the second time. I wish I could have gone. We haven't talked about that movie yet on the podcast. Really good. It, we, we, you and I saw it together we for the did, first for time. Birthday. Opening night. That movie. It wasn't on your birthday, but. It was the night before my birthday. Yeah. That movie is, let's talk about, let's, 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 let's break down Jackass Forever, Roger Ebert style. Okay. Spoiler alerts. Uh. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about some specific stunts, so if you care about getting the stunts spoiled, uh, skip to uh, the ju uh, just code. just tap the forward 15 button a bunch. Okay. Um, no, skip until the ad break's over, because we'll do the ad break after we're done talking about Jackass. Okay. How's that? So if you're yeah. on the YouTube video, you can tr you can skip until you, where you see in the table of contents thing where it says the ad break. Skip to the, the after the next we're ad break. We're about to be talking about Jackass 4D, which has been in theaters for a good bit. It's not 4D. Not 4D. I don't know why. I said That'd be that. miserable. I, I wish it was, <laughs> like you get kicked in the balls yeah, along like, with them. A fucking uh -huh. like wooden thing kicks you like from under your seat. You get your fucking pepper 4. sprayed. Jackass Four, aka Jackass Forever. I I think was okay. was on par with all the other Jackasses. It was fan. It was a fantastic, fantastic addition. And I was very nervous going into Jackass Forever that. Uh, you know, it's been a decade. I'm like, uh, what if it's just, what if it's just not oh, as good? Dan's not there anymore. He was in it. I didn't realize. There's a scene wait, that he's in. Wait, really? Yeah. I was looking for him at the end credit shit. Is he is in the that? end credits. He's towards the bottom, but he's oh. in a scene. 
And I re- and when I saw it, I noticed this was time. It, was he in there for a good bit or was it like a quick little? Just one stunt. He's in the stunt too. And Which uh, stunt is it? The one where they're jumping on the treadmill with the marching band stuff because that was the first stunt they filmed for the movie. Okay. He's one of the people that jumps on the treadmill. And I didn't, only the second time watching, I was like. Wait, 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 when they're doing the flashback or like when they're no, doing no, no. the treadmill stunt? The treadmill where they're the marching band guys and they jump on the treadmill. Like he's in there? He's, he's one of the people on the treadmill. I didn't even fucking see I didn't see notice that. either the first time until the second time when I was looking and I was Are like. Are you sure that's him? Positive. Positive. Because they filmed that as the first stunt and then uh, they kicked him out of the movie because shortly after he failed like his sobriety test. Yeah. And they told him, they gave him an agreement up front like you have to pass and be sober for this and he. Didn't do it, and that's when he went on his tirade. But like, he's in. At first, I was like, "That's not him." Yeah, and I was, and I was like, "Jim, is that Bam?" He's like, "Yeah, that's him," because he he already had known about that. Look it up. He's one of the people. He doesn't say anything. He fucking falls and hits his head, and he's like, "Because oh. he's in the credits." He's in the credits, pretty far down. But it's it's in the latter half of the movie. But it shocked me. I was like, "Oh shit!" I didn't realize that they actually kept him in. Oh, he was the first one, and it's so overexposed that you can't really. It's him though. I was I when I noticed, I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I was the first one to check on Stevo after. Oh yeah, that's. I didn't even fucking. Notice I didn't catch that. it either. It's like Bam, Johnny, Jasper. I really liked the new the new additions. Yeah, I thought the they all did really well. L- watching it a second time, I really uh, I think I think Poopies is my favorite uh, new Cat, edition. Cat- New edition? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Poopies is definitely my favorite new edition. Uh, ja- uh, Only Zach rivaled Asses by... I keep forgetting her fucking name. Rachel Wolfson? Rachel Wolf. She's great. Rachel Wol- Wolfson. Wolfson. Rachel Wolfson. She was I really just, I've, I've only seen her in this, so like, the, the name will come. It will come. As she, as she, uh... Hurts herself more. <laughs> yeah, I hope, dude. You think this is the last Jackass movie? I don't know. I could, I could see them in another ten years being like, let's do one final one where we're all 60. <laughs> like, cause this one, the, it's like, oh, they're where, older, but where like the repercussions are them actually just dying five years later because they break their hips. <sighs> they look pretty good. When in that one scene, when Preston says, "I'm fucking fifty-one years old," I was like, "What? He's fifty-one, and he's still doing." S- he shit his pants. He shit his pants. He shit his pants. He got hit with a a, a cannonball again. Mm-hmm. Okay, so are you sure we didn't talk about Jackass? I guess we haven't. No, we haven't because uh, we haven't recorded one since because we recorded some in advance. That's right. Um, so what was your favorite stunt? Because mine was the night vision uh, <laughs> one. That one. That, that one was my. Favorite. That was really funny. Uh, I think my favorite one. Uh, honestly, like I, I think the one that just made me laugh the hardest for some reason. It wasn't even like a big stunt. But it's one of the new guys, Eric uh, Manaka. Um, they just make him like walk out of uh, like a trailer. Uh, like he doesn't even know he's on camera. But it's it, I guess they're setting him up for some scene, and he's like dressed up like a like a waiter, and he's carrying a tray of milkshakes. <laughs> oh, and they just put like fake, fake steps that just crash when he step like walks on and just drop like spills all the milkshakes. <laughs> it's just so it's just so simple. And then also in the same vein when uh. I think my my favorite is the same one with the trailer when like Steve-O walks out and they just fire the. Fucking uh, like volleyball <laughs> yep. through the right at his face. <laughs> it hits him in the head. So good, so good. But my favorite like big stunt was uh, oh man, um, that's 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 tricky because I really liked. I liked. I thought the the bear one was pretty. Yeah. Because uh, there are moments in that one where I was like, uh, he gets the worst ones. Danger, Aaron. He gets the fucking worst. Like he's the down for it though. The cup test one. Was he the one that came up with the cup test, though? No, not originally. No, he, that he, was Johnny Knoxville. And that was, oh, like, kids, kids kicking, kicking him in the nuts. The and in this one, he gets his dick hit in a... That, I can't watch the the pogo stick, dude. Dude, I, 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 I really that. refocused in this time to watch it. It is bad. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't. I can't bring myself... He gets his... He gets, him, he gets himself punched in the dick by the guy who has the hardest punch in the entire world. Uh... He, you can tell by his reaction, like he's that's like suffering. That, yeah, because they have in slow motion. You, it's, it, like he doesn't even look like it's funny. He's just. Then he has uh, the fastest pitcher in the world hit him with a softball in the cock, and then he has that's a softball pitcher. Yeah, soft. <laughs> yeah. That's a you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's not it's not one of us. Uh, it's, it's it's a pan ladies sport. Yeah, yeah. I would never play softball. That's like that's like t ball almost or volleyball. 
No. That's for topless women at the beach. Yes, it is. While I'm sitting there sipping a Mai Tai. Yep. Uh, My mom plays topless volleyball all the time. When she, when I was young, she was, I did it. I, did, I, did. <laughs> I wish I could have kept that one I, going. Yeah, I, 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 I bust. Have some little, <laughs> you bust. I, I broke. Like, I, I wanted to have, like, some little, like, past recollection. Oh, well. Um, but basically, uh, and then they have the, the hardest hockey hitter hit him in the nuts. That guy was hungry for his balls. He reminded me of Jacob a lot from Off Canny, like his, <laughs> yeah. his demeanor. Is it just because he's... No, he was, his demeanor was very, like, his demeanor was like, you're fucked. And that's very, like, Jacob. Mm-hmm. Like, Jacob yeah. from Off Canny is very... Yeah. That's why, that's why it reminded me. It was, like, he rem- gives, gives off Jacob energy to be because, of his, because of his attitude. Because of his... En- yeah, his, it's his energy, yeah. Yeah, and then he... Yeah. No, no, yeah, go on. And then he, and then he gets, uh, uh, just po- that pogo <sighs> stick jump directly onto his cock and balls. I, uh... See, like, th- this one, I was worried that the stunts would not be as, uh... I'm, like, writhing right now. I can't... I was like, oh, you know, they're probably gonna tone it down for this one because they're older and they're, you know, they, they'll, they won't be as bad. But they, they were, they were, they were just as bad if, if some of them debatably worse than, than the past ones. Like, the fucking pogo stick on the balls, like, what? holy shit. Okay, so there now, was less poo poo and throw up. I noticed. Good. They 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 took more of that out, because three had the diarrhea <laughs> volcano, which was a, a lot of puke. There was really not a lot of puke in this one. There was puke at the end, and that was it. I think. Oh, dude! I remember the one where like, it's like, oh, Steve was wearing the astronaut the helmet. helmet. And Preston poops in the tube accidentally. And he pukes in the helmet. And yeah. You just see it from like underneath. Ugh. That is that that one always got me. <laughs> oh man. But they've always been so, they've also been so fucking lucky. I've been watching some of uh Steve O's Wild Ride, his like show, but really only the ones with like Johnny Knox. Like I watched the one with Johnny Knoxville. And oh, I he has watched, a show? He has like a podcast. Oh like, he has a podcast. Steve O. Invite the super mega boys. <laughs> no. We'll do some crazy stunts. Steve, he gets views, baby. He, we're we're nothing but chum in the water. Steve, I'll if you invite us, I'll do whatever whatever stunt you want me to do. And I say that now, I will. I'll do it. I'll take the bullet for us. Will you take? Okay, a- you'll take a real bullet. <laughs> 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 Blows your brains out. No, I uh, will. Will I? I would do a stunt. I mean, I am the CEO and president of Super Mega. Yeah, like. I looked. I, and where are you? Side note: I'm the, I'm the secretary. <laughs> we looked. I, I was looking up the business documents for Super Mega to like to, for a reference, and and it lists our official positions. And I was like, oh, we just put this down a while ago. And I'm pretty sure you're like the CEO and president, and I'm just like secretary in like some other like role. And I was like, what? I love. I it, I'm not like. Oh, you're a secretary. It's just the fact that we are both co-owners of this business 50 50 but it says that you're ceo and i may, maybe i think i'm secretary maybe it's like director or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i'm secretary baby so but uh this one god i think this the stunt that would have been the scariest to me was probably the bear one because the bear's really like going it starts oh, really going it starts for like him. going for his hand a little bit and you're like mm-hmm. okay nibbles okay. on his hand and then starts like or the one with wee man with the fucking massive vulture um, that just made me be like, oh, dude, for him, that's like a velociraptor. It, it could legitimately bite his cock off in one quick, like, yeah. That reminds me of the stunt with uh, Steve-O when he had the, like, he was, what was it? He was doing, like, a tightrope over, like, an alligator pit, and he put, like, chicken in the jock strap. Yeah, that's that's back when, when Steve-O was, it was the third one, the first one he was, like, sober for, I think? Third one is when he got sober. Yeah. So the first two, he he was all down for the really fucking. Yeah. The one I always think of is the fish hook through his cheek. That one bothers me so much. They all say uh, the second one is when they were on their worst behavior in interviews. Oh, you you can tell. Describe it. You can tell. Well, it's because they feel like rock stars. I bet. Because they had the the first one one made them so famous. Because they had the cult following of the TV show, and then the movie could just be so much worse. Yeah, and then they, you know, they got so rich from the first one, too. They were like, let's party, baby. Yep. This t- Two has, I think, my favorite stunts out of any Jackass movie. Yeah. Two, I, th- I think Jackass 2 is my favorite. I like, I like, though, that they still keep the stunts in the movies. Like, you could do it at home <laughs> for, for some of them. There's other ones that are, like, definitely have, like, the production value put into them. But for the most part, it's like, they just hired a... Or they got the their animal guy and just got bit by a snake. 
or uh, stung by a scorpion. Uh, or they just went out and r- made shitty ramps from pl- wood you could get at like Home Depot and like jumped off of each other and then landed on. Oh, that could have broken their ribs. I know. I actually. I'm sure it might have. I'm, I, I'm excited. I'm sure there'll be 4.5. They always do a 0.5 with all the extra shit. And I, I, I want to see like the statistics of like. I've seen the other ones like how many broken ribs, how many, because like they don't show the aftermath. So I'm sure a lot of those, there were like a lot of broken bones. Johnny Knoxville actually, oh dude, I, the first time I saw it, it looked painful, but the second time I saw it is is when it really like- The bull? The bull one. Uh, that that was actually like- That took- That one was like, that looked like the most painful thing in the whole movie. He gets- Because it looks worrying. He gets hit by this bull so fast and it flips him around like three times and he, he hits his slams head. his head on the ground. And he's like out cold and like doesn't remember it. And then they take him uh, to the hospital. And my favorite thing I noticed about that scene was when they're wheeling him out of the hospital. I, I noticed is the same hospital I got my asshole surgery at. <laughs> hey. And they pushed me out in a wheelchair from the exact same door. And I was like, I did the. Should have the, taken a picture. The Leonardo DiCaprio point at the TV yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, I got like the meme or the gif. It could have been the, the same meme. Could have been the same wheelchair I sat in with my asshole surgery. Could have been. How many wheelchairs do you think they have? Not that many. Probably like two. Probably they don't so need it's more a than two. Fifty chance at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's hospital up in the valley. Great place. But, damn, dude. They only work with celebrities. Yeah, that's why I was able to get my asshole surgery there. Well, also, I told you I saw my asshole surgeon on 90 Day Fiance. Really? He was, uh, he was talking to one of the people about some kind of plastic surgery or something. And I was, the second I saw him, I was like, I recognized that voice, and I saw him, I was like, that's the guy that literally did my asshole surgery. He's a very, very, very specific man. It, there was no way of mistaking it. Well, speaking of Hollywood... What do you think about the Tom Cruise burglary scenario? I haven't even heard of this. Uh, wait, what? Wait, I haven't heard of this. So let wait. Let me get my final thoughts on Jackass. Okay. Break, and then tell me about this Tom okay. Cruise thing. I okay. have not heard about this. Okay. Final thoughts on Jackass Four. I think it was, I think it was the perfect uh, addition. I, I think that they 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 brought the punches. It was not lackluster at all compared to the other ones, which was my fear. I didn't want it to be another Borat two. Uh, so I didn't, I tried not to get too hyped, but I, I was, but and it, so, it, it lived up. Good. It was a great movie. Great. I'd, I'd see it for a third time. I want to see it again in theaters, but I think I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then four. I want to do that too. If, if, if you want someone to see it with you again, I'll see it for a third time. I'm down. Okay. Shit's good. Okay. I want, let's go. Let's go. Also, real quick, favorite Jackass cast member. O- old one? See, I, 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 I love Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O and stuff. Johnny Knoxville is probably my favorite cast member. M- mine too, but let, let's say Steve-O and Johnny Knoxville are not allowed. I would say Chris okay. Pontius. Chris Pontius is my favorite. He's, he's just funny as fuck. He's just, he has, he, like, he never does the super extreme stunts, you know? Yeah. He does stuff with his penis. Actually, and he was in Wild Boys. Chris Pontius, uh, I think Chris Pontius is fucking hilarious. Uh, and he has such a good spirit, but I actually just... While I was taking a shit before this podcast, I saw this. Chris Pontius uh, has done more full frontal nudity scenes than any other actor in Hollywood. Hey, I'm yeah. sure that's a that that must feel good. Yeah, Michael Fassbender thought he did something. Mm-mm. Not with a uh, nope, nope. Chris Pontius got him beat. Yeah, you have a nice cock, Michael, but uh, it's it's not something that's never been done before. Yeah, try again, sweetheart. Let's see that cock one more time. All these actors think that showing their penis is some like. I'm I'm showing myself. I'm 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 sacrificing myself for the art. When you get the jackass guys, it's like, you're like just showing your cock to to thousands of people. That's all it is. Porn stars do it every day. It's like when directors back in the day were like, oh, now now you, you now you're naked on the bed, but it it was it it, it, it resembles innocence and a, a pure state of mind and Bullshit. you're in love with this person. Okay, there's dudes that walk down the street in New York City and flash their cock at people. You know, you're no yeah. better than that. <laughs> so, uh, well, that, I guess that's a different. That's definitely a different route to take. Showing your one. cock to people. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, but uh, I mean, great, we great get movie. No, I mean, we do get a warning. No, they don't tell us. No, they, there's no warning. At the beginning that says there's going to be penises. No, but you go in knowing the rating of the movie. Well, when you walk on the streets of New York City, you know what you're going to get into. That is true. You know, that's a pretty dangerous place. It's it's a, it's 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 rated X, bro. Yeah, it is. Dude, remember, dude, I remember. Oh, they should sorry, change it to New Sex City. It's like when I was in elementary school, it was like a big, X-rated movie. It was a big thing to know about NC-17 and X-rated. It's like, yeah, there's G, PG, PG-13, R, but then NC-17. I remember. And 
X. Because I, I remember they were like, you were like, what movies are that? Like, you, yeah. nev- you never hear about NC-17 movies or, or X. Uh, that's just porn. NC-17. <laughs> they are, I don't though. even think they rate. They have to be porn. Do they rate things NC-17 anymore? Or do they just cap it at R? Because when's the last time you saw an NC-17 movie? They also, never get released in theaters. They don't allow, or they use, they typically don't put them in theaters. It's funny about NC-17 because that is like the highest tier, but it's, you can go see it at 18. It would be a good marketing gimmick. No, for, 17. Imagine a Marvel movie rating them, like getting an NC-17 rating on one of their movies. The Superman Up Saves the Troops movie will be NC-17. <laughs> will be rated X. I wonder what you have to do to get that rating. Well, X isn't an official rating. X just means it's porn. X, X was like, I thought that there was a real rating, but it just means that it's sex. Yeah. Also- But NC-17 is, a, is an actual rating. About AO. Wait, did we go to commercials? We're about to. Oh. AO? I gotta tell you about- On video Tom games? Cruise. He's a criminal. What? Yeah. Okay, okay. we're, we're going to take a, a short ad break. Uh, you enjoy these ads, and then we will be back, and I'm going to find out what, what the hell Mr. Cruz did. <laughs> let, me, uh, let, me, let me piss out of my cock. Okay. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2022, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for wireless? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. I was tired of paying 80, 90, 100 bucks a month for wireless service when I realized that I could be paying for the same service uh, for 15 bucks a month, you know? That's money saved in my pocket, and that's exactly what I did by switching to Mint Mobile. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. That's right, on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. It's easy as pie. And with Mint Mobile, choose the amount of monthly data that's right for you and stop paying for data that you never use. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bones a month, and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash supermega. That's mintmobile.com slash supermega. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash supermega. Time is money. Don't waste either with repeated trips to the post office. With stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how you can take your small business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer and saves you money in the process so you can spend less time at the post office and more time making your customers happy. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And you get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. Wow! All you need is a computer and standard printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you can send. We got Stamps.com over here at the Super Mega uh, headquarters. You know, we use them uh, to, to, you know, we have little side hustles of our own. Uh, Matt sells his Whip It tutorial DVD collection, and I sell empty books. So, we're able to make our customers happy with Stamps.com, and it's great. And, oh, it's very fun to use as well. Stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code SUPERMEGA for special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter SUPERMEGA. Yep, bye. Is it raining? Or is that the air conditioning? No, it sounds like it's raining. I'm gonna go check. Is it raining? I saw it was cloudy driving over here. Is it raining? Oh my. Is it? Is it? Oh shit. Oh shit. Dude, it's Holy. F- no way. Oh. Oh. All right. Rain. Rain. Don't go away. Come again another day. Uh, we are back. I, we've been. We were back from the ad reads, but, but our c- computer froze. But so I, I don't know where we last left off. But damn, it's it's. It, I don't know if if we caught the audio in between. But Ryan was like, "Is it raining?" And then we went outside, and it was fucking pouring and windy. And that's I did not. It's cold too. Okay, so are you really not like it was on Twitter and shit? No, I didn't see this at all. Like, did you? Where's your trending set to? Here. 
W when was this? Never, because I lied about it. Ryan, <laughs> why would you do this? <laughs> what do you mean? Does, uh, doesn't that sound juicy, though? Yeah, I was ready for a fucking like, Tom Cruise story. It, well, okay, I was like, I was like, I thought I would have heard about this. No, but he's still an asshole, though. He is. He's a horrible person. <laughs> Good actor, but uh, I mean, he's fine at playing Tom Cruise. Yeah, I mean, he's fine. At, he actually, he's a good actor. I'll, okay, Magnolia and when Tom Eyes Wide Shut. That's you know. that's. I'll I'll give him a pass for those two movies. Magnolia and Eyes Wide Shut. He's great. You complete me. You complete me. Worship the cock, tame the cunt. That's a good role. That was that was that was that was his best fitting role. I think. See, I think his best fitting role was in Tropic Thunder. As Les okay, Grossman. actually, yeah, I'll give him those those three movies: Tropic Thunder as as Les Les Wex, Les Grossman. Les Grossman. He was he was he was pretty good in that. Him and Matthew Grossman. McConaughey were my two favorites in that movie. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey is probably my favorite. Ben Ben Stiller is always just kind of like he's fine, but like I'm never. I don't want to sound mean, mm. but I don't think Ben Stiller ever steals the show except Zoolander. Yes. Zoolander, he steals the show. That was a funny script, too. Tropic Thunder, uh, you know, it's like, he's good in it. He's great, but, you know, it's like, any of the other characters, I feel like, could have also been the main character, and it would have yeah. been, you know. Who's uh, your favorite of the main group? Of Tropic Thunder? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think I said this a few episodes ago. Uh, uh, Al Pacino? Uh, Laz uh, Kent Lazarus. Oh yeah, or is Kirk, Kent? Lazarus. Kirk Lazarus. Kirk. Kirk, Kirk Lazarus. Kirk. It's Kirk. Kirk. Kirk Lazarus. Kirk Lazarus. And and when I'm saying that, I'm talking about specifically after he like realizes his true value, and like he like looks like white again, and he like like <laughs> and his, he, has his blue he takes eyes. it. Yeah, his blue eyes. That like that's my favorite part, just because <laughs> the look on his face. And then the fucking I forgot about like how many people are in that movie, like the trailer with Elijah Wood. And, uh, oh, yep. Like him. Wait, Elijah, like, you mean Toby Maguire? Oh, fuck. Yeah, Toby Maguire. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was Elijah Wood for some reason. Yeah, Toby MTV Maguire. MTV is like two is like two time MTV Kiss Award winner. Or Kiss of the Year <laughs> Award winner, Toby Maguire. Oh, fuck. I wish they made those into real movies. It reminds me of that fucking. I was thinking about the uh, always, uh, not always sunny, uh, Arrested Development s gag they do with like the cousins, Danger Row. <laughs> yep. And he's like, we should see that. I need to rewatch that show. The show's good. I remember actually laughing out loud many times because Daniel was the one that showed me the rest of development. Mm -hmm. And he also showed me The Office. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. He was on the Jim's a dick bandwagon. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, man. He thought Jim was an asshole. <sighs> I haven't actually I haven't seen enough of the show to, to say one way or the other. <sighs> I'll tell you what I think. I think I think everyone was an asshole at some point, and that's life. A Amen. You know he's getting that Pam pussy, right? Oh fuck yeah! He's getting yeah, that Pam yeah, that's what I thought, man. That's what I thought. Fuck yeah! Yeah, that's right. That's right. So what about not anymore? Because you know she died in the show. No, just oh. the show d d doesn't exist. That that reality, their reality ended. They're they not, they're, they don't exist anymore. You know, Joe Biden, President Biden, is also from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh shit! Isn't that isn't that incredible? He was in an episode. Psych. That's another believable thing. I'm like, oh, he's from Scranton. That I think he was in, um, the, what's the fucking, the com not community. He was in, um. Parks and Rec? Parks, yeah, Parks and Rec. Listen, Buster. Because she loves Joe Biden or something. She's like, I love Joe Biden. So is fucking, uh, Adam Devine from, uh, Workaholics. He did a bunch of, like, skits with Joe Biden. Wait, really? For the election, yeah. Where he's like hanging out with Joe Biden and shit. The workaholics guys were together for a bit and then they just went their separate ways. How long was the, the show last? Oh, like five or six seasons, I think. So still be a pretty good run. It, I, I love workaholics. I never really gave it much uh, thought at the time, but any episode I have come across, I, I did enjoy. I just have to try to give it another watch, I guess. Yeah, workaholics is, is, is great. The I think you know the real genius behind Workaholics was was Kyle, Kyle Newichuk, because he was he was only a minor character, but he was like monumental in like writing and directing that show, which is uh pretty cool, pretty cool. They're they're uh they're they're funny dudes. They are, you know. Actually, uh, my cousin uh grew up in this one house in South Carolina, and then his parents got divorced, and then uh he, they moved out of the house, and then. 
Adam and the other workaholics guys ended up renting that house and living in it for a while. And uh, I just thought that was funny because I'd go there for Easter every year and all that stuff. And I have so many memories in that house. And now I think that the workaholics guys kind of lived there for a while. And uh, my cousin went up to their table at a bar uh, down the street from there and was like, hey, I'm a big fan. And I'm trying... I, I think it was... Okay, see, I don't remember who was mean and who wasn't, so I don't want to put any names. One of them said thanks, and the other one said, can you not? Wait, so, really? Yeah. Oh, I know why they were there. Why? It's because Adam was renting the house because Adam's in Righteous Gemstones. Okay. And that's in Charleston. And I went and saw the uh, Super Church set when I was home for Christmas. Is that that HBO show with Danny McBride? Yep. It's It's the one with uh, I have to watch that. John Goodman and Danny McBride and Adam. Apparently it's great. There's a lot of great show. Like Eric Every Andre's time we talk it? about TV, like I still have to watch so much shit. Queen's Gambit, Mad Men. Queen's Gambit's Sopranos. really good. I need to watch both, all three of those. I've seen some of Queen's Gambit. And it was really good. And then uh, Mad Men, I've only seen the first season twice. Uh, but I, I really want to finish Mad Men. I, I think I started Mad Men in high school, and I feel like I just wasn't mature enough. Yeah. But now, as a 26-year-old man, it's going to hit just right. Just fucking right. Just fucking right. And uh, Sopranos, too. I need to... I've only seen the first episode, but... Pretty good, pretty good. Listen to me, Paulie. You bitch. I'll kill you. I'll whack you. Dad, are you a... Dad, you're a gangster. What? Say that again and I'll pop your mouth out. To his 10-year-old daughter? <laughs> I'll pop your teeth out. <laughs> and then I'll have to pay for some new ones because you're my daughter. Love The Sopranos, man. Classic shit, man. I've never seen it. Have you seen any episodes? No. I, I know the ending. That's the only thing I've known oh, about. Oh, I don't know the ending. I've seen the ending. <laughs> That's it. Really? Yeah. Does it seem like it's good? I will... Okay. I could take a wild guess right now. No, no, no. There's there's, there's two... I'll, I'll say what a... There was a big kerfuffle at the time. I think now it is a lot more appreciated. And I don't have any context for it, but artistically, I like what people can have derived from it. By oh, I've, I've heard about ending. the ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't it kind of just like... <clears throat> Just boring or like, not was boring. It, it just felt like it didn't conclude for a lot right, of right. Okay, that yeah. <sighs> the lost there was ending. no big explosion payoff. Yeah, like Breaking Bad gave people when he kills every member of his family and every member of the Mexican cartel. <laughs> he rips Gus's head off and drinks his blood. I am the one who knocks. And then he then he masturbates over everyone's corpses. And then Jesse goes. Mr. White. And then he looks then at he Jesse and he says the N-word. And Jesse goes, Yo, Mr. White. And then he shoots Jesse in the head. What's the director? Was that just the director's cut? Man, I didn't see that version. What? Everyone was talking about it, dude. I saw the one where it ended where uh, he's laying on the ground and Jesse's sucking him off to try to keep him back, like, alive. Hang on, Mr. White. Don't die of cancer. I gotta keep that blood flowing. <laughs> We're no, you're losing it, Mr. White! He's like shaking his <laughs> cock around, trying to keep it hard. We're idiots. What do you think about that? I love it, man. I love being an idiot. <laughs> and it takes fun. a lot of pressure off in life. I know. Imagine it's living great. life trying to, like, having to, like, be a fucking professional. And, like, you have to... There, you have Uphold to, to a standard? There's some responsibility on your shoulders, you know? Well, there's actually a lot of responsibility on our shoulders, but... Mm. We, we, we just... Yeah, fuck it. Do we? Yeah. Do we fuck responsibility? Uh... For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, baby. S sometimes we do. Some sometimes we we fuck responsibility. See, so yeah, I can I I'll admit it. That doesn't make it any better. Like guys that are always like, oh, Valentine's if I, if Day I is a national it. holiday. Everyone takes off. No, it, <clears throat> that's true. That's true. It's not true. Yeah, well, they don't give Valentine's Day off. No, because corporate America doesn't give a fuck. They nope. want to sell you chocolates and roses, but they don't. They don't actually care Send about the crush the love. to your crush. They don't care. Ooh, that's a good marketing campaign. Uh, that was at my high school. Send a crush to your crush. Mm -hmm. We had a, we had, you could, uh, gummy, like the sour gummy worms. Ooh. Silver foxes. You let's go. Let's go foxes. Woo. Holy shit, dude. When you did that, I, you're fucking, your arms. You want to see something? Your muscles look fucking mad. Damn, dude. What the fuck? Right? When'd you become a Greek god, dude? <laughs> when you, when you did this, I, you saw my face. Your muscles look fucking massive. Not just the right one, man. It's both of them, dude. 
Damn, dude. That's fucking solid meat. I've been putting in work. I've been eating a lot of meat to build this meat. I haven't been able to be on my diet, really, because my fridge has been broken. Boo, you haven't fixed that shit yet? No, I have. I bought the oh, fridge you on- the YouTube tutorial? I bought the fridge on January oh. 31st. Get it? Because then, you know, like, you- You fix, fix the you, fridge. Yeah. Frid you can't- I can't fix it. It's- it's broken. How but Michael Jackson? He's great. I gotta clean his tank today or tomorrow. It's gotten a little foggy. Does he seem upset? He's like, mm. Yeah, he's kind of giving me the, the cold shoulder. He's like, <sighs> he's like, come on, man, just clean my tank. Uh, is but he still happy when you when you get home? Every though? day, yeah. He comes straight up to the and I give him some goes, food and he swims all around. He goes, yes. Yeah, you know, yes. I'm. <sighs> it's like wagging his tail, kind of. I he he I, I can see he's looking older now, like he's looking a little more weathered. I just noticed that Legos just get he just is fatter, but that's prop that I don't know if that's like just because he's older. I don't see the age in well, Lego your metabolism right slows when you get older, but yeah. Probably same in dogs. But my fridge, I ordered January 31st, and it's not going to be here until the 22nd of February, so I've just been... Woohoo! Just waiting. Remember you know? that one? I don't remember what it's... I forgot what it's from. It's this song. And they go, Woohoo! Uh, it's by Blur. Okay. Dun, wait, the rock one where it's like, Woohoo! I think so, maybe. Dun, 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 yeah, that one. Song number... Is it called song it's number... It's called song number two? I think? Tell me, Ryan, is this is this what you're thinking of? It's 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 Blur's biggest hit, and Blur is the same singer from Gorillas. If you didn't know that, Blur is great. I love Blur. It's why is it were playing? You gonna, were you gonna play it? Song two. Hold on, it's playing it on my computer in the other room. <laughs> oh, Blatantly <laughs> join like... that. Yeah. Uh, play no, play it on this. Where is the option to play it on? My... I gotta wait for the. Here comes that. Yeah, I'm adding that to this month, this this quarter's Woo! playlist. Yeah, man, Blur's great. They, dude, they have a song you'd like a lot called uh, "Coffee and TV." That was one of my favorite songs when I was in. Um, I'm gonna add that to my monthly playlist too. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, uh, I listened to that song on my iPod Shuffle a lot. So give me coffee and tea. I've been listening to a lot of Bee Gees lately, and Andy Gibb. You know, uh, the Bee Gees. Bee Gees. Everyone knows the, the more bl than a woman. The black guys. No, not the other ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're great, man. Uh, <laughs> the black guys. <laughs> you see what they look like? Get it though? The Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I thought you were just making some joke that there's like a like just another group of black guys. Called the Bee Gees. Either way, it's funny, dude. Look, wait. Let me let me pull up this Bee Gees music video real quick. You you tell me that one of these guys is not Lord Minion seven seven seven. Good. You were, I I was scared you were about to say Wade, and I was about to go who? Yeah. Well, no. It's Lord. It's the Lord Minion seven seven seven, and uh, it's the song. Uh, I think I think it's Nobody Gets Too Much Heaven by Bee Gees. Yeah. Here we go. You look at this shit and you tell me this isn't Wade, dude. First of all, fantastic song, but it, 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 you, you, you'll 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 see one's which Wade? ones you'll see you'll see the one the the balding one. That wasn't a dig. That was just pointing out the other two have huge heads of hair. So when I'm saying which one Wade is bald. So I'm just saying here. He has, he's just wait wait till you see the front. Wait, there's there's a, there's a front shot coming up where he looks. I'll find it. Hold on. Could you imagine to... people dressed like that doing that today? That'd be people, awesome, dude. People would think that's like a Tim and Eric. That would just be a Tim and Eric sketch, dude. But like, you know how like music cycles. I think that this would be so cool to come back. This style of music. I mean, this is what this is. No, the I mean 70s. like their style, their look. It's come back to their a degree. Look is unique. Yeah, it's. I mean, that was just normal back then. That was like cool. I guess now that just hipsters. No, nope, I'm sorry, Ryan. I made a mistake. It's a different song. What's a different song? The the music video. I'm I'm sorry. It's how deep this is your is love. Very it's very this is this is embarrassing for me more so than I you see just that so you know. You even watched it too all I the way through. Dude, I love Bee Gees, man. I what I do sometimes when I clean my place, I'll put on just like a playlist on my TV of like old music videos like this. I mean, when I clean, I like to put on some porn. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> like while you're vacuuming. Okay. Okay, dude, okay, is this not Wade? Hold on, ready? Not him. 
need the show. He's coming up. Piss your love hat. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fucking Wade? That is Wade. That, that's Lord Minion 77 to an extent. This is like, it's like one of those things, you know, where like Nicolas Cage, you know, they're like, is he a vampire? Because they see like, Yeah, because like, this was what, 1975 or something? And it looks like it's, Wade has just lived, like, he lived as one of the brothers from the Bee Gees. And, and then Wade just, was only born five years later. Yeah. Or was he? But like, I wasn't exaggerating, that looks just like Wade. <laughs> like, especially from when we knew him, when he, when he had like hair. Yeah. And, you know, they just could, just looks like him. I, I think everyone should uh, should go check out that music video, How Deep Is Your Love. Not only because it's a great song, but because it stars Lord Minion 777. The Lord Minion 777. Does it have the? Mm -hmm. I think it's just Lord Minion 777. When we, but he, he is the. Did we, did we say the in our book when we brought him up? <laughs> Maybe. We said Lord Minion 7, but did we? <laughs> I can flip to the page real quick. Did we... Do we say the I Lord know. Minion? <laughs> well, at first it was 777, and then I just backspaced <laughs> the first two. All right, I switched straight. And then you laughed at that, so I just kept it in. Oh, no, it's... Because I thought it was funny just to keep it Lord Minion 7. No, Ben, we're not here for you. We're on the hunt for these two jackasses, Michael Richards said, holding out his wallet, which contained a printed-out YouTube screenshot of Matt and Ryan from the Whisper Challenge number 4 with Markiplier and Lord Minion 7. <laughs> these boys leave quite the trail of breadcrumbs. Have you seen them? The breadcrumbs? Osama asked... No, you fucking moron. The YouTubers. Good stuff. Good, good New York Times best-selling authors right here. Mm. One day, it's gonna happen. One day, we'll write. We'll write someday. our someday. Some. So I, I, I have read a lot of reviews of the book. Uh, you know, both, both good and mixed. And uh, I haven't seen any like bad ones. I've seen mixed, and I've seen some bad ones. Well, I did actually see what someone said was. I was like, the the one that I found the funniest was. Um, and if you know comedy literature, it's all subjective. So, well, if, like if, they, if you if, didn't like it, that's totally. If cool. they didn't like it and they think it's childish, then it's like yes, it is childish. And if you didn't like it for that reason, then that is a perfectly vo good reason to not like it. Like we 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 lean into the immaturity of the yep. book a lot. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, but I saw my favorite review was like. We were just trying to make each other laugh through the writing. That process. was literally the whole thing was like, we were just laughing at how asinine the book was. <laughs> like, the way we wrote that book is the same way we, we do, like, the podcast and stuff. Is where we just try to make each other laugh. Yep. And I fucking, we were dying writing that book. Uh, but one review was like, you know, it's like, for their first book, you know, the writing is good. It's just, I wish they had taken it seriously. And, like, the person was upset that we didn't take it seriously. And I was like, that's, that's, that's what the book is. <laughs> It's like, w w I, he might have gone into it, or they might have gone into it expecting, like, hard literature, where it's, like, actually about, like, our hardships and, like, like our day-to-day -day like life. it was still, like, a comedy, but, like, there was, like, a... Like a black comedy. Yeah. Dark no, comedy. Yeah. Not, not, like, not Tyler like a Perry. Jordan Peele. Or Tyler Perry, right. Um, but, I actually had a dream about Tyler Perry the other night. Why? I don't remember, and I don't remember what happened in the dream. What? I asked why. No, I don't know why I had a dream about Tyler. I, I, I don't know why I have dreams. Did you follow... Fuck. Every time I want to say swallow, did you swallow a fly? I say follow the fly first. You follow a swy? You follow a swy? That's like, I, I always say Thea of Sieves instead of Sea of Thieves. Thea of Sieves. Thea of Sieves. Because it, it still sounds close enough, Thea of Sieves. Sea of Thieves. Oh, guess what, Matt? I got a major update on Sea of Thieves. Am I about to do a beta male smile to this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you earlier, but I'll, I'll tell you again. I'll tell well, why don't you tell me after these ad reads, jackass? Man, one of the hardest things in the world, and I mean hardest thing in the entire world, is to find a fast pre-cooked meal that, you know, isn't frozen, tasteless, or highly processed. Food that's fast doesn't have to be fast food, though. Freshly is here to offer quality meals without the hard work. Their meals are designed by nutritionists, cooked by chefs, then delivered fresh. Other meal deliveries need to be prepped and cooked, they're frozen, etc., but Freshly is ready to eat in three minutes. We could all use, uh, especially in this day and age, we could, we could, we could all, you know, take a breather from having to get home from work after a long day and cook. Imagine that's already done for you. You just got to get home and just take three minutes and have a delicious chef cooked meal. Freshly sent me and Ryan some of their meals and, uh, over here at the Plex, we had them for lunch and let me tell you something. Mm, 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 mm. That's my review. It was absolutely delicious. Like, very fresh, very delicious, convenient, 
great flavors, healthy ingredients. It's got everything you want. You get delicious chef-made nutrient-packed meals delivered straight to your door, no cooking required. Fresh and never frozen, ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. Getting food you love is incredibly easy. Use the Freshly website or app to find meals that fit your lifestyle with plans that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. You can choose from over 50 nutritionist design entrees, like their classic steak peppercorn, multi-serve sides like their masterful mac and cheese, or their new line of plant-based meals. It's also affordable and convenient. Skip the grocery shopping and dirty dishes. Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every week. And new meals are added weekly, so you're never stuck eating the same thing over and over. So stop stressing about dinner. Right now, Freshly's offering our listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash super. That's $40 off at Freshly.com slash super. Yum, yum, yum. Does CBD work? Well, over 90% of doctors said their patients have used CBD to treat a health condition. Listen, when 9 out of 10 patients use CBD, that speaks volumes about how safe and effective it can be. So let me tell you about CBDistillery.com. With over 2 million customers, CB Distillery is the source I trust. When patients tell their doctors that they use CBD for help with their health conditions, what are some of those conditions? Well, if sleep is a problem, 90% of CB Distillery customers said they sleep better with CBD. If nagging discomfort is a problem, 80% of customers said CBD helps with discomfort after physical activity. And if you're looking for a little peace and calm these days, you'd be wise to explore CBD as well. I like using CBD oils when I'm, when I'm, you know, all lubed up and about to start another Breaking Bad marathon. And using CBDistillery.com to get that CBD oil to put me in a really relaxed state of mind is, is fun. If you haven't discovered the power of CBD, you're missing out. Go to CBDistillery.com where you can order online with no prescription required. And enter Super Mega for 20% off. Again, enter Super Mega for 20% off at CBDistillery.com. That's CBDistillery.com. Not available in Idaho, Iowa, and South Dakota. All right, so tell me about this uh, Thea of Thieves thing. Sea of Thieves? Thea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Okay, buddy. Peter so, Thiel. Yesterday, I finally completed a, one of the many grinds in Sea of Thieves. But I completed one of them. Another one. Another one. <laughs> I got the silent barnacle set. Clothing set, weapon set, ship set, and equipment set, baby. It all unlocks when you get one commendation, which is turning in 300 barnacle chests, which you can only get from sunken ships or sunken uh, skeleton ships or rarely what on an island, fuck? maybe. Holy maybe. shit, dude. Ryan, three hundred. You turn them in. Bought you, the whole set. Cost over two million gold. You little scallywag, dude. That's down to awesome. Three hundred thousand gold now. Damn, you got a lot, a lot of gold. Yeah. Wish you had that much in real life, don't you? Oh yeah. You know, you know what's next? What? Arena cosmetics. <gasps> so you're, what? you're trying to? They're changing a game mode, right? And you're trying to complete all these things before they do that. Yeah, they're taking it away. But you can keep all the stuff still if you get it in time. Nice. <laughs> that's can, can, that's you, can you can you resell doing. items? But the silent barnacle wasn't a part of that. I just I have to go relax and adventure, and so I just grind out barnacle. Or I did. I don't have to grind barnacle chests anymore. Hey, not baby. anymore, baby. Ooh. Not anymore, baby. Ooh. And when people see that on the cheese, they go, "This man has no lie, dude." When you when you uh, when you when you told me about that just now, I had the biggest beta male smile. And if if my blinks had cartoon sound effects, go twink twink. It was just I was I was shocked. That's take, awesome. Take it takes a long to not. Not too many people have. Uh, there's a lot of people that have it, but at the same time, in the big picture, not too the, many people. Exactly. I'm proud of you, dude. So I feel I feel happy for that. You know, honestly, there's that stigma where it's like you shouldn't feel proud about that kind of stuff. I think you should because even just because it's in a video game doesn't make it any less real to you. Because now the whole thing is the metaverse, and they're trying to legitimize that and be like, oh, you know, this fake world is is just as good as the real world. So why should you be, you know, shamed for for doing something incredible in a video game? Remember that? Do you, do you you remember that old video where it's the guy describing um why he doesn't need a job because he's a gamer and he like tries to make it all inspirational. Is that what he said? Do you remember that? Where he's like, they tell me to go outside. I don't need to go outside. I've explored thousands of acres of real world in Skyrim and Legend of. And he tries to make this really inspirational video. Hey, get this. It was on R slash cringe ages ago. Point oh nine percent of players have this. Not even one percent. Wow. Less than 1%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, less than a tenth of 1%.
No. No. That's like nine tenths. Oh wait, no. Is that point? Did it say point? No, point oh nine. Yeah. So less than one. Yeah. So like yeah. a, less than a tenth of one percent. Yes. You were Fuck right. Fuck yeah, dude. That's insane. First, my brain went to point nine again for some reason. That's fucking awesome, dude. I'm proud of. Ow! Fuck my eyeball. Just felt like 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 there was like a like a bug inside that just moved around. Ow! Like a like a crackle. Like a, maybe I got a fucking parasite in my eye. The movie, because <laughs> I watched it so many times. I had a somber dream last night. What was it about? You and I uh, were at the Game Grumps office, and it was the last day of high school. But for some reason, the Game Grumps office was at high school. So we were leaving the Game Grumps office for the last time. And we went back into the old recording room. And you and I were like just standing there and like taking it in and walking around. Like, this is the last time we'll be in this recording room where we basically recorded all of our old videos and all of our old podcasts. And it was really somber. And we walked out, and then we were like, let's go back in for just one more minute. It was, it was super somber. It was actually really sad. Then I woke up and I was like, oh, I actually have been in that room for the last time. There was a last time we were at that Grump's office. There was the final day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we visited afterwards, too. And we recorded a bunch of our stuff there, too, as well. Yeah, they still let us record after we uh, got fired. We still like, <laughs> yeah. I, I still, it was still nice to hang around with everyone. It's, it's, uh, it's crazy, dude. I miss everyone, but I know that we're all doing our own separate thing. Yeah, they're so busy all the time. Well, everyone... It's good for them. You just have to remember that everyone has their own fucking life outside of, like, also keeping in contact with you or being your friend, right? I saw this... Someone took a picture at, like, some huge sporting event where it was just, like, like a million people in the stands, and it was like, it's like, there's no way you can tell me every single one of these people has their own life. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's true. It's like, when you see that many people at once, and it's like, damn. They do, though. They do. Or they don't, and and I by you, the way early, early that wasn't a dig. Like I don't keep like I I'm very bad at communicating with people. And, well, also like, it's just like up and stuff. we're in the same sphere, but also just we're always doing so many different things that it's. I talked to Aaron the other day. Aaron's a you know sweetheart. I will always love Aaron. I'll always I like I talked to Brent the other day. I always love Brent. Brent is is a stinky little man. I love him, dude. Yeah. You know, the listener of this podcast, it's totally plausible that. We don't have our own lives. You're the only one. In in us, this podcast was, yeah. was made by 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 your creation inside of your complicated brain to speak to you, Alex. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just so take think that in. About that one. Take it in. Start. Maybe you should wonder if things are real or not. Really start thinking about it. You know, I'm sure that there's been some things in the past that have were questionable now. Think a little harder on those. Come on, Alex. <clears throat> but yeah, dude, uh, you know, it's it's a we we've been uh we've been all right. Been uh yeah. just uh taking care of business well, and working overtime. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Even though it wouldn't show by we're our uploads. Spending, yeah. But we we'll, we behind we'll, the scenes we've been we'll a lot of stuff everyone. going on. We'll update everyone. I know it's it's one of those things. What's happening? Where it just sounds like an excuse. <laughs> yeah. No, but there there there's been a lot of big changes lately, and we uh, will talk about it all in in the upcoming future. But um, I'll tell you what. I man. saw someone on Twitter. They were right. It's the yearly excuse. Yeah. The yearly apology. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's about due. It, it is about due, year, baby. The yearly content apology. It's about due. Also, but you know what? This time of year is usually when it happens because this is the lull of the year. And when I say lull, I don't mean it's LOL. The lull. It's when we are trying to reshape things. And it's also when the channel makes like just add just everything. It's it's when the least amount of money comes in. Yeah. So it's it's a little like demoralizing, but not just because of the money. It's just like it's kind of just a boring time of the year. Yeah, January, February, March, and then once we head into the spring and summer, it's like, Ooh! and I know we—it's a meme at this point. But yes, the podcast, the live action podcast room is almost set up. The you have to remember that it's not that it takes a long time to set up the room physically. It's that ordering the stuff that we needed to order, or wanted to order, took time. God damn it! Fucking was on back, and it kept getting canceled, and then now it's. If you think it's almost done now, the if last. If you think books took a long time to ship, 
a, ma a massive <laughs> like like six soft box light sets that have to be like secured to the ceiling by a specialist and you know all this shit. But it, you know, it's this room we have you know it's fully sound iron out these curtains. I really like this room as the podcast room. It's got a good, got got a good energy. We just need to get like these LEDs. Tucker has to finish the lighting setup. Yeah, which he should be able I to mean, do this. A week. lot of the, the shit's kind of set up right now. It's a they're all mounted already and they're. Working he he needs to adjust some stuff with it, and then uh, we're gonna I think what we're gonna do is probably Maybe we could shoot a test episode for patreon mm -hmm. and then put that on there and yeah and get some feedback like a super mini cat Yeah, like like a little like no. 20 minute like just test or a 10 minute test episode just something small where people can see the layout And then the super mini cast people be like wait the super mini cast is gonna be video now It's like no, this is just a test Super mini cast will stay audio. Yeah, but it would be cool to have a test episode others being the super mini cast as a live action because one special time the on thing the Patreon. That super mini cast needs to stay audio because the way it works with Patreon is you have to upload an audio file for the RSS feed I think is how it works and if we upload it as a video then it, it well can't you do both yeah um no uh anyway yeah I'm 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 stoked for the live action podcast set I mean it's ever since we've start like this 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 is this kind of shit's not new with us. This is like since day one. Yeah. Hey, we'll be back on Kids with Problems. <laughs> someone someone recently is that uh the last video. What's the last video on Kids with Problems? That, we'll be right back. No, there's there's that tweet from Kids with Problems. <laughs> uh, that's like the week of uh. Ooh, my friend just texted me. Says she hears thunder in L.A. Ooh. As you've noticed, we've been on hi on hiatus while we focus on our new channel, Super Mega. We will return. Thank you for the support. In 2016, Matt. That was in 2016, dude. Time flies the fuck by, my man. It's weird because I I feel like I've gotten older, and I also feel like it hasn't really changed. Oh, you look older, at least. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I also feel like not much internally has changed. Well, nope. My my worldview and and everything. You but... still act like a child who eats candy and cereal. Get that cereal out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm at the breakfast table eating like imagining. Fruit Loops and Markiplier like <laughs> pimp slaps the. The, the spoon that, out of my mouth. Get that, get that my fruit loops cereal. go flying onto the wall. Get that shot. Get that cereal out of your mouth. Good God. I just liked how, like, get that fucking cereal out of your you mouth. You get that cereal out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> Puts his hand out like how teachers do when you got, like, gum in your mouth. <laughs> Spits some soggy cornflakes into eating, his like, a half a breakfast ham with, like, a <laughs> A breakfast ham. <laughs> 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 Fucking breakfast ham. It's not even a thing. It could be. <laughs> but in this moment. Ham man. would be great for breakfast, honestly. A because breakfast it's, it's ham. It's a lot of protein. Oh, it's dude. I just want some ham. Ham sounds pretty good. Ham with mustard. But not like just ham. Honestly, like, not like just deli ham. Like some nice smoked ham. You want like a ham on a silver platter. Like a like a pig that's got a fucking like apple a in its mouth. Honey. Honey baked dude ham Virginia honey baked ham. Oh. I might go buy some lunch meat on the way home and just eat it. Don't do that, dude. Why would you make that gesture at me? I'm sorry. talking about eating lunch meat, and you're gonna make the fellatio gesture as if you're sucking off a man's penis. <laughs> sorry, brother. That's just the way it is. That's the way life works. <sighs> yeah. And don't like it, don't watch. Dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Come back from that one. I can't. There's Zero absolute possible way to come back from that. Sorry. Yeah, and you sip your little smug little water. Mm -hmm. Your dihydrogen monoxide. My what water? Smart water. They changed the logo of smart water. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that it's different. You see that? The lo like the font's different. It's funny because like that doesn't seem like too much of a crazy change, but then when you look in a video or a picture a couple years from now and you see the old one, you're like, whoa. Like when I watch like when Coca-Cola Coca did a bunch of their shit. Or like Mountain Dew, like all well, that Pepsi. Coca-Cola's released a bunch of goofy looking bottles. I might I still have my collection over at my mom's house, I think. Ooh. Okay. I'll take pictures next time I'm there so I can show them off. Yes. Yes. There's this one that's really cool because it just like Skinny, then gets fat, then gets skinny again. Oh, the coolest bottles I ever saw were in China. Were they like the Fanta bottles? Would they were like bulbous and then thin and like I can't 
really describe. They were really I like. They're a really cool. Sphere with liquid in it. There's something about that that's so pleasing to me. And then also like when it's really thin, like a soda bottle that's thin. Yeah. Like you can really grasp because these coca-cola bottles nowadays. I can barely get my hands around them <sighs> They're so thick. They're always fucking slipping out of my hand I'm spilling my soda all over the white carpet getting in trouble with my with mother. It's not fun So, you know, I I, I wish they would make them like this like Just like a like a Imagine long back in the day. You're coming home from Working 50,000 feet up in the air. However fucking high they build buildings <laughs> not, yeah, 50,000 feet. Not 50,000 feet, but... They, they build them the, 10 miles into the sky. <laughs> let's say, let's say, let's say 5,000 feet up in the air. That's more than 10 times taller than the tallest I'm sure building. there's a mile building. No, there's not a mile what, building. Be the a tallest mile. building right now in 2022 is the Burj Khalifa uh, that Wiz Khalifa uh, built himself by hand. And I'm pretty sure that they're, that's not a mile tall. I don't think they can build a mile tall building. I'll make them. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Ryan said so. <laughs> The Mile High Illinois, Illinois Sky City, or simply the Illinois is a visionary skyscraper that is proposed to be over one mile high. Visionary. Conceived and described by American architect Frank Lloyd Wright in his 1957 book. See, so this fake building. Hey man, Frank Lloyd Wright's one of the greatest architects of all time. So if he saw that it being possible in 1957, then they could do it. I just feel like they don't do it because it's like, is there really a point in making a building? It's almost, I feel like it's inconvenient at that point. To have yeah. a building that tall. Because it's like, yeah, I work on the 600th floor, so you got to be like, Ooh. I mean, it's a danger, you know, it's like a big target in the sky, planes have to go around it, you know? We don't want another. Yeah. Yeah. A couple guys messed up on that day. Yeah. Right in their way, didn't even see it, and that's because the buildings were too tall. And if they keep building buildings that tall, you know? Oh. I say we build underground. Wait, <coughs> Justin told me he was Mexican. Really? Well, that would explain the height, but I don't know. <laughs> I thought I thought he was I thought he was <laughs> Oh, we have some fun here. Yeah, we have a little bit of fun. We have a little bit of fun. We do a little bit of trolling. Us white boys get a little crazy sometimes. Yeah, us white boys do go crazy sometimes. Ugh. You know, <laughs> that's a good way to end <laughs> it. On, Let's just end on. the podcast here. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll see you next week for two eighty five. Uh, creeping up on three hundred. Start giving us ideas for what we should do for episode three hundred. Um. Yep. And to end it off, happy birthday. If it's your birthday. Mm -hmm. I think it's the first time we've ever done that. So Probably. Happy birthday! Yeah. Makes Congratulations. Or if you're listening to it on your birthday, happy birthday. But it's more important to the people whose birthday is today that, it, that when this goes out. Like your birthday today, Alex. So, bye guys! Bye!